So how bad are refrigerants in heat pumps? It's a difficult one to answer and it feels a bit like electric cars and batteries. It's hard to get a, a sort of balanced view on it because there's lots of varying opinions, but refrigerants um, that are used are, can be harmful, or they are harmful for the atmosphere. So let's have a look at it. We're, I'm talking here about the fluid that's used in a heat pump. It has to be a certain um, compound that will evaporate and condense in the right sort of temperatures and pressures and have the right properties to transfer heat. And in the past, uh, CFCs were used and they were very good refrigerants, but problem, it was found that they were causing damage to the ozone layer, but they've now been eradicated. So you won't come across ozone depleting refrigerants anymore. But what we do have now is the replacements, which are hydrofluorocarbons, um, not known to affect the ozone layer, but they do have a rather large global warming potential. And to explain what that is, for example, if we look at R410A, which is a common refrigerant used in uh, many heat pumps, but if we release one kilogram of that to the atmosphere, it's equivalent to releasing over 2000 kilograms of carbon dioxide. And we can see they vary slightly. This is a, a fairly new contender, which is a lower number than the others. Below that, we've got hydrocarbons. And this one here, 600A, is used a lot in domestic fridges. Your fridge may have it in. Um, it's flammable, but there's such a small amount, that's not really a problem. And we've got R290, which is also used in some heat pumps now. I've also listed ammonia, which is um, environmentally is excellent, but it's um, quite hazardous. If you leak, if there's a leak, you'll know all about it. Um, and also I'm showing carbon dioxide, which is fairly new again. It's a, a refrigerant in its own right. And I don't think we, well, we didn't really think it would work. Um, surprising it does. And the cycle it uses is slightly different. So it's uh, just slightly different to apply. So the refrigerants um, are, should be sealed into a heat pump and they shouldn't leak, but they can. So what we're gonna do is just look at the potential savings of carbon dioxide by using a um, heat pump to heat our houses. And then after that, look at potential um, leak uh, risk and how much that would eat into the savings made. So this graph shows um, some fuels that we might be using to heat a home and it assumes 15,000 kilowatt hours a year. And this shows how much CO2 would be produced per year, let's say from gas to oil between 3,500, 4,500 um, kilograms of CO2. I put down electricity fairly favorably at um, 0.2 of a kilogram per kilowatt hour. Um, it varies, it will vary up and down. Uh, over the uh, 24 hour period, but the trend is downwards. So I think it's fair enough to have a fairly low figure there for this assessment. But I've also put a halfway mark here because uh, to be fair, we shouldn't be using this amount of energy for heating. It should be a lot less. So just bear in mind that anything on the left here, you could maybe divide by two and I've show, I'm showing here the heat pump um, and the potential saving, savings. So this heat pump has a COP of 3.3, which um, is quite realistic. It's not optimistic. We should get better than that really, but uh, let's go with that figure. And that's dividing our electricity by three. So it's a third of the electrical figure here. So we can see the savings we might be getting if we replaced our oil boiler and put a heat pump in, we should, should save this much carbon. And if we're 
um, replacing a electric heater with a heat pump, we should be saving this sort of amount. So now let's look at the risk of leaks. Now, just make myself smaller, so there's some in the way. So I'll just talk about the actual risk in a minute from equipment, but uh, looking at this, what I've done is I, okay, if, if the um, a heat pump was to lose all its charge in one go, and let's say it had two kilograms in, which is maybe typical of a, a medium small air source heat pump, the damage would be something like 5,000 um, kilograms of CO2 equivalent. Now, there's no way we're going to lose that refrigerant um, every year. And from my experience, I'm suggesting that even if we lost the refrigerant charge in 10 years, that would be uh, an unlucky worst case scenario. So what I've done is I've divided uh, that amount by 10 to give an average yearly um, risk of um, leak. In other words, I've divided that by, by 10 to make it per year. So that's the potential risk if that was leaked in 10 years. And we can now compare that with sort of with the, with the um, advantage here by using a heat pump. I've also shown the R32 here, which is about a third that of some of the other um, commonly used HFC refrigerants. And I've also shown a ground source heat pump, which should be less because they may, they should generally have less refrigerant in them because they um, are more compact. Now these are for package um, um, uh, um, heat pumps. In other words, everything's all in one place and the leak uh, risk from those is very low. Now, if you think of a domestic fridge, they almost never, I feel like saying they never leak, uh, almost never leak. You'll buy a fridge, it will last its 15 years or whatever it does, and it's very likely to go back to um, whoever um, scraps it, the refrigerant will be taken out. Um, so in the case of domestic fridges, the risk of a leak or the loss of refrigerant is extremely low. Uh, package unit heat pumps are similar. They're all welded construction. There's no gaskets, no joints, so they shouldn't leak at all. And most of them won't. Most of them will last their um, whole life, again, 15 years or so. And they should, at the end of their life, go back somewhere. It's a legal requirement and the refrigerant should be recovered. So that type of equipment is, um, is pretty safe, really. But I'm going to show you uh, a joint from a split system, which is um, where you've got refrigerant lines between two bits of uh, kit, one inside and one outside. And this joint has been used for many years, and it surprises me that it's still used now. Um, most split air conditioners use this very joint. And it must pose an extra risk that although these are pretty secure, they're unlikely to leak, but some of them will be um, very slightly. And that means it's contributing slightly to the um, global warming leak here, but also it's probably reducing the uh, COP of the heat pump while it's running, while it's leaking. It, it, <laughs> It will be reducing slowly. So this will be diminishing. So I would suggest that a split system is slightly more risky than a uh, package unit. Nonetheless, it's a small risk. Now, the question is, is that amount acceptable if you were to lose your refrigerant charge in 10 years or not? Um, Ideally, that would be, there'd be no risk of uh, harm if it leaked. But um, 
do we really want all that amount of refrigerant out there uh, as a potential hazard? Um, it's a question I can't answer really. All I can do is look at those and think, well, in some cases, um, if you don't have a heat pump and you don't have this refrigerant, then you're not saving this much CO2. So you sort of go around in circles trying to work out um, a definitive answer. And as I see it, there really isn't one. Um, but personally, I would prefer, if possible, to avoid the HFC refrigerants and go to a hydrocarbon, which would not show up on this graph. Um, the only point to make there is you want to make sure that in doing that, you're not, again, diminishing your savings. But hydrocarbons do work extremely efficiently and um, they should be at least as efficient as a HFC or more so. So there you have it. That's my very approximate um, assessment of the damage, potential damage of uh, refrigerants. And I, there are much more detailed studies of the topic, but this will give you some idea. And I will leave you to ponder that at your leisure. Okay, thank you and goodbye.